So this is the query, uh, uh, Elasticsearch Query Editor. Uh, and by default, it has a single metric, which is just the number of documents uh, that uh, this query is returning. And there's no sort of Lucene filter or anything applied. It's just uh, a group by time. Uh, and the interval is set to auto, which means that sort of Grafana is going to uh, set the, the interval bucket size, uh, depending on your time range. Uh, so you can specify uh, that you really want to group by into 10 minute buckets, one hour bucket, uh, and this sort of will determine how sort of how many data points you get back and uh, um, and, and the granularity of of, of the graph. Uh, anyway, uh, this is a metric uh, uh, document, uh, so we can actually specify another aggregation or other metric aggregation. So let's select average, and we will have specify a value. Uh, field here and also we can specify a specific metric that will have a, will look a little bit more interesting uh, so this is a, just a normal Lucene query that I'm specifying new now uh, let's see login.count this looks more interesting uh, and one thing to note is um, in the field selection here you I only have number and value uh, if you're missing a uh, field in this selection it's probably because it's not uh, a number valued field so uh, uh, Grafana is requesting the index mapping from Elasticsearch uh, and it uh, and in this drop down it's only showing the indexed fields that are of the type number uh, because those are the only ones that are supported by Elasticsearch uh, with these metric aggregations so this is using the average one um, and you can also specify some options here, a, a scaling factor, which allows you to sort of, uh, if you want to divide the value by eight or double the value, you can do that. Uh, you can also specify um, what uh, value should be used if, if there's no document at all, or if there's no, uh, if there's no value for this document, what, what uh, should be used instead. Uh, and let's see, we can collapse and expand that option section. Uh, other options are uh, metric aggregations or average, um, sum, max, min. Uh, they are work very similarly, uh, basically the same but different aggregations. Uh, extended stats is a bit different. It uh, kind of combines all the others and, and also adds options for you to select standard deviation. Uh, standard deviation upper and lower. There's also a sigma option, which is associated with the standard deviation op uh, uh, metrics. And uh, you can sort of select multiple, uh, and uh, if you hit re refresh, they will show up. And let's uh, change the legend to table so we can easily see, um, see those. Uh, and uh, let's switch back to average. So what you normally want to do maybe is add a group by uh, a field. So let's say you have these metrics being sent by multiple servers. You can add a new group by. So you always have a, a, a date histogram group by to get a, a time axis. Uh, but uh, you also might want to do a group by, for example, the host name field. Uh, in this case, we then get uh, multiple series back, which is sort of split by the host name field. And uh, the terms aggregation or group by has a bunch of interesting options. You can sort of decide uh, how many uh, you can limit sort of the, the group by. Uh, so maybe you only want to have the top three. And you can also then specify the, the sorting and by what value the sorting should be done. So you can here actually specify uh, the metric that you're showing. So we can s sort of uh, order by the average value and uh, let's uh, add the average value here as well that wasn't that interesting let's uh, switch that to max instead and uh, switch the aggregation to max and now uh, 
uh, all these series are <laughs> look identical for some reason uh, but this is a, a very powerful thing to do to just show the top uh, three or top five uh, given a, a metric that was the uh, uh, the, the terms uh, group by uh, let's go back and explore what other metrics we have we have um, percentiles which is so super useful uh, for performance metrics you can specify exactly how how many buckets you have or you want to show uh, so and when you graph um, percentiles it's also very interesting to include the count uh, so you can actually see uh, how many how many uh, documents that are included in each uh, sort of percentile bucket and that's sort of the, the bigger uh, the, the more uh, documents you have in each bucket, the more accurate the percentiles is going to be. So if I change this to uh, maybe add, have 10 minute buckets instead, uh, each uh, each uh, bucket or each percentile is uh, used, uh, is calculated from 480 documents. So that's going to be much more accurate percentile. So that's sort of one thing to keep in mind when you're using the percentile segregation. Um, so let's switch that back to auto um, and uh, let's re oh, remove uh, that let's see we have um, another interesting set of metrics that I want to show you uh, and that is uh, what's called pipeline uh, aggregations in Elasticsearch and pipeline aggregations are aggregations metric aggregations that sort of derive from another metric so if we select for example moving average um, oops, uh, and uh, the moving average is a metric but it's gonna sp uh, require you to select another metric so it sort of uh, applies you have selected an average of value and then you apply a moving average on that average um, and here you can specify the window so let's say we have uh, uh, 10 and you can sort of if I zoom in here you can see that uh, the moving average is sort of uh, a smoothing of the underlying uh, value and you can also specify which sort of, sort of average averaging function uh, or which moving averaging uh, algorithm that should be used uh, another uh, pipeline aggregation is the derivative one and let's uh, pick uh, another metric here that is, is actually uh, an ever-increasing counter so let's look at this metric uh, which just keeps increasing uh, and we might want to look at sort of what which, at which rate this metric is increasing uh, and then we can sort of first pick an aggregation function uh, and then we pick uh, the, the derivative function and then specify um, specify our metric that we want to apply the derivative to um, and uh, now we can hide the original uh, metric that we don't so, so we don't we, which we don't want and in this case you see that the, uh, the graph is blank and this could be because our group by time interval is actually lower than um, uh, lower than the rate we which we write. So if I change this uh, group by time interval here to uh, be never be below 10 seconds, we should get a graph. And this now we see that the rate of increase of this metric was actually uh, 100. Uh, so the slope, the angle of the slope, uh, uh, let's we can turn turn the original metric. The angle of the slope was 100. So uh, the derivative is very useful, but uh, uh, keep in mind that uh, you need to have a value in it, so you, you, you shouldn't sort of group by a date histogram lower than the rate of which you write. And that what, one way to do that is set a lower limit for the group by time interval. That was uh, all the different metrics you can select, and uh, all the different sort of ways you can uh, group by uh, filters and oh group by terms um, so let's uh, continue by going back to our logins count metric and um, let's see if we can 
have a curve there and let's uh, look at another another group by which is the filters group by and the filters group by allows you to basically group by a filter so I can sort of say I want to have uh, the host name to be server one and uh, I want to have another query that says host name server two normally you maybe want to have um, normally you might sort of have uh, conditions here to say maybe that this number should be from one to a thousand you can do anything sort of uh, to group uh, th this documents into subs subsets which becomes their own series